KY3 News at 6 starts with breaking news. I'm Emily Wood. Breaking news right now. A plane crash in northeast Springfield near Pythian and Glenstone. That is right by Evangel University. And we are showing you a live look right now at the crash site. Traffic is blocked off there as emergency crews rush to the scene. This all unfolding right now. We are told the small plane went down very close to the downtown airport. Of course, in that part of town. KY3 photojournalist Cody Nutt is live with us on the phone. He is there at the scene. Cody, what are you seeing right now? Hi, Emily. Um, right now, I'm at the corner of Pythian and Delaware. They have police have blocked us off. Um, you can see in the shot here. Um, there's a small, looks like a single engine plane. Um, it isn't in a heavily wooded area in between a couple of houses. Um, I can't really get a shot of it right now, but there is an like an elementary school playground here, just on the south side across the street. So not very far from where the plane has landed. Um, numerous uh, police, um, fire, uh, ambulances are here. Um, no word on yet if anyone was uh, injured from this crash. Um, we are waiting for that right now. Um, that's about all I can see right now. Um, I will keep you guys updated. Cody, any idea how many people were on board that plane? No idea. Um, from the size of the plane, I wouldn't say much. Um, like I said, it's a single engine plane. Um, I, a couple people here refer to it as a jumper. Um, we are still waiting on that. I have not seen ambulances leave the scene, so I don't know if they've already got them out. Um, but we are waiting on word from fire. And you obviously have a closer vantage point than we do, just looking at the live shot here. How bad is that wreckage, Cody? Uh, it is, uh, in other words, mangled. Um, um, I'm guessing from the impact of, from some trees. I can see some damage in trees. Um, it, uh, that's about all I can see from here. We are still pretty far away. Um, please have us blocked off in fear that um, a fire might occur. We now know the names of all four passengers on board that flight. The plane is registered to and owned by Integrity Home Care, a Springfield-based company. That information coming from the Federal Aviation Administration. We can also tell you Bill Perkin, a vice president for that company, was piloting the plane. Perkin also owns KSPR Television, a station operated by KY3. Also on, on board, Greg Horton, Paul Reinert, and Amy Ford, all of them part of Integrity Home Care. The four of them were returning from a trip to the company's Kansas City office. The plan was to land at the Springfield downtown airport. We began our team coverage tonight with KY3's Mike Landis on the scene since the story first broke. Mike, what can you tell us? Oh, yeah, Emily, everybody around here is saying it's simply amazing that these four people were not killed when you simply take a look at the wreckage here. We're just off of Pythian and Glenstone across from the Evangel University campus. If you look through those trees, that is what is left of that Piper Saratoga plane. It was a small uh, six-seater aircraft. Now, we are told that it was coming in for the landing at the downtown airport there when something happened, and it simply was coming in through here, and the pilot was somehow either uh, unintentionally or on purpose was able to miss all these homes by simply uh, several feet here. There's a home on the north, the south, the east, and the west here. Of course, the Evangel campus right across the street here. So definitely uh, a lot of people counting their blessings out here as well. Now, witnesses told us as soon as we got here that the two people uh, from the plane were able to make their way out of the wreckage were actually walking around uh, with very minor injuries. Two people, though, did have to be extricated from their plane's wreckage. Uh, we saw them being taken away in ambulances early this evening after this happened, uh, just before the 6 o'clock hour. Now, witnesses uh, initially told police that they saw this plane uh, possibly clipping a cell phone tower over near the OTC campus. That's just about a mile west of where we are at. And we can tell you that we traveled to the OTC campus, looked for several blocks, and could not find any sort of a sign of cell phone damage. And police also are not confirming for us tonight uh, if that was actually the case or not. Once again, this plane landing on a vacant plot that's owned by Evangel University, but it is not the campus proper. Of course, the FAA has been called in to investigate this. Of course, a lot of witnesses, as we told you, saw this. A lot of these were students across the street at Evangel University. I was walking back from the CAF, and I just heard this like loud explosion. So, I mean, I didn't see anything happen, but there's just like huge crash. We're just very thankful that it landed just off the campus. Uh, exam started today. Uh, most of our students are still here. I mean, a playground, there's all kinds of stuff on this street. So yeah. 
it's wild that it landed in a clear spot. Yeah, that's a good thing, very good thing. We're very fortunate. Of course, we don't know the circumstances. If uh, if it was, uh, you know, something that uh, the, the pilot took action to, to t was able to do that type of thing or not, that I'm sure that's will be something that the investigation is uh, is focused on. And of course, neighbors and students at Evangel, upon hearing and seeing this, ran out. And when you look at the condition of the wreckage, of course, they are very shocked and thankful uh, that those four people were at least taken out of that aircraft alive. A lot of people seeing this. And of course, that's where we continue our team coverage tonight with our own Eric Hilt tonight. Eric. Mike, like you said, this is a pretty residential area, and as you can imagine, neighbors are pretty shaken up at the idea of a plane crashing on their block. They said they heard a very large, a loud bang, and they didn't think much of it at first. They thought it might have been a car backfiring or maybe somebody setting off fireworks. It wasn't until they saw dozens of police and fire crews running down their street, they realized something had happened, and when they found out that it was a small plane crashing in their neighborhood, they said they were absolutely stunned. Neighbors said they never Never had seen anything like this in their uh, in their life before, and they never imagined that they would see something like this, especially just about a hundred yards away from their homes. I heard like a loud boom area, like just sound like a boom, kind of like fireworks, maybe you know, like dim fireworks. But I wasn't sure what it was. So I, I didn't really think anything of it, and a few minutes later, I looked out and and saw the. Uh, you know, all the, the police activity and fire department activity. Neighbors said above everything, they're just very grateful that the plane did crash into that vacant lot and didn't hit any homes, and most of all, that nobody was killed in this crash. For Mike Landis, I'm Eric Hilt, KY3 News. And we want to show you the path that Piper Saratoga took early this evening. Flight Aware is a website that shows those things. The plane took off from a Kansas City suburb, Lee Summit. This is where it started. And you can see the blue dotted line. That was the charted course for the plane headed for downtown Springfield. The solid green line beside it, that is the actual path the plane took. And you can see the pilot followed that plan nearly precisely before circling several times and crashing just short of the downtown airport. And we want to show you some of these pictures as well. This, of course, is a shot from the crash scene, the mangled mess of that Saratoga there near Evangel University. This is what the plane is supposed to look like. It is a six-seater plane. Again, it had four people in it at the time of the crash. So here are some more pictures of the outside of the plane. Here's what it looks like flying inside. Again, it seats six people. Four people were in that Piper Saratoga. We also want to show you our pictures on KY3.com because we have a slideshow with almost a dozen photos from the scene with Springfield police and firefighters responding. Again, check that out at KY3.com. And if you were close to the scene, you snapped your own pictures, you can also upload those to that site, KY3.com. Now, that crash happened about 30 minutes after sunset, but it looked like the pilot started having problems before then. We want to bring in Chief Meteorologist Ron Hurst now for a look at the weather conditions when that plane went down. Ron? Well, one thing we do know is that when an airplane crashes, the National Weather Service is, of course, informed, and they have to take what they call a special observation. I've had to do that myself when I was a weather observer. So tonight, they did take that observation. And what they found was is that the ceiling was at 1,600 feet. Now, we did have an overcast sky in Springfield. Uh, visibility, though, was 10 miles, and the winds were out of the southeast at about 9 miles per hour. Now, this falls into what we call the visual or marginal uh, visual flight rule. So it stands for what we call MVFR. Now you don't need to have uh, the instrument rating. Uh, that would you would have to have for IFR, which means the ceiling would be below a thousand feet and visibility would have to be below three miles. So technically, uh, this plane should have been able to handle those types of weather conditions. So uh, we'll have to certainly do an investigation and see what happens uh, with the NTSB when they put all the details together. As far as visibility goes tonight, it's still pretty good out there. We have 10 miles in Springfield, but there are some areas where there is some fog. Notice down around Harrison at about a mile and a half and three miles being reported at the Branson area right now. So there is a little fog in the area, but that was not the case at the time of the airplane accident. Emily? We're getting new information right now about that plane that went down tonight near Evangel University. KY3's Mike Landis is there, and Mike, we understand they've discovered more pieces of this wreckage. Oh, yeah, that's right, Emily. We've been telling you all night that earlier when this happened around 6 o'clock, a witness told officers he thought uh, when he was on Chestnut Expressway, he saw the plane clip a cell phone tower. Debris fell off, 
and that has been under investigation all evening. Well, tonight police are confirming near the municipal court building off of uh, Chestnut Expressway in Benton, they have found a piece of the plane at the bottom of a cell phone tower right there. We have uh, reporter Eric Kilt on the scene right now uh, who is getting that confirmed police. But once again, uh, a part of that plane right there, you see behind me, this is where most of it landed. But this site, uh, the cell phone tower, is about a mile west of here. So at this point, police confirming, yes, a part of that plane did uh, somehow land near that cell phone tower. They're not saying whether uh, it hit the tower and that caused the crash or if it was coming down already and struck the tower. In the meantime, we're hoping to get more details about that uh, sometime in the coming minutes, Emily. Mike, you know, it's really striking when we see that live shot, uh, just how close that airplane is to the house right behind it. Can you get an idea of how far away that actually is? Uh, from the cell phone tower that we're talking about, it's possibly about a mile away. Right here uh, is the lot. It's just several hundred, if that, even feet away from a house on the uh, east side and for the west side. And we can tell you right now we're standing here on the north side of Pythian. Uh, right beside me is the Evangel campus with several dormitories. And behind us are a couple of residential centers. So really, this plane uh, came within several hundred feet of several areas where there's a lot of people in there. Police are also not saying if the guy landed the plane on purpose uh, uh, to get away from these people in this lot right here, for, or simply landed here, but either way, uh, that landing right there really did a lot of a benefit in the way of saving a lot of lives, surely, out here, Emily. Absolutely amazing that all four people on board that plane survived and that no one else was injured. Mike Landis for us tonight.